God has commissioned Pastor Vera or Robert to preach the word of faith, ushering people into the life of limitless abundance. Get ready for an encounter that will enable you to obtain all of God's blessings for your life. Glory to God! God is good. God is so good. God is so good. You know, no wonder the songwriter said, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul just wants to shout hallelujah. Has he been good to you? Yeah. Yes, God has been good and we give him all the glory. We give him all the glory from January to December. God has been good. And you know, the Bible says he crowns the year with his goodness. That means there's still more goodness coming your way. Hallelujah. We are grateful. How many of you can sincerely say, looking back at this year, that indeed you have seen the goodness of God? Let me say, sincerely, sincerely, sincerely. Honestly, when we're entering this year, yes, we knew God was going to help us, but hi, we have been marvelously helped. We have been marvelously helped. It's only a man who is so unrepentantly ungrateful that cannot thank God for all his goodness this year. I mean, your, your lack of gratitude is beyond measure. But if we all look at our lives, the fact that you are here this morning is a sign that God is good. Can you jam your hands together and give him praise this morning? God is a good God. Awesome, awesome, awesome God. And here at Morningstar, God has been good to us. We had so many weddings this year. We are grateful to God. Amen. Several people are yet engaged to get married next year. And many people are going to be getting married next year. If you are one of them, you better shout a good amen. This year, God has helped us. Many of our women went to the labor room, had their baby, brought their baby home. We are grateful to God. We are grateful to God. And just last week, Sister Oke, who teaches in the children's church, had a bouncing baby boy. And I have just been informed that Sister Iboyi just had a baby boy this morning. God is a good God. See, it is this kind of thing that make a pastor bring out and catch him to dance. They didn't call me for burial. They called me for baby dedication. I beg, I want to give God praise. I want to give God praise. They called me to come and dedicate car. Should I not bring out anchor chief and give God praise? Call me to dedicate house. Souls have been worn everywhere. God has been good. This morning I want to talk to you about something special. I want to talk to you about the grace of God. I want to talk to you about the grace of God. You know, it is the grace of God that goes to locate a man in the dungeon and carries him to become a prince is the grace of God I'm standing here this morning as an exhibit of the grace of God so what I want to share with you this morning I know what I'm talking about amen I know what I'm talking about the grace of God in checking the Bible from Genesis to Revelation you see that the whole Bible is about the grace of God so it's not only the New Testament that talks about God's grace. From the old to the new. Everybody that ever fulfilled their destiny on earth fulfilled it on the wings of grace. You can never become anything on earth in the program of God without grace. The grace of God. The grace of God. But many people don't understand grace. Do you know grace? Many times we just define it as unmerited favor. It's correct. It's actually a favor that we didn't merit. We didn't work for it. That's why many people eh, cannot go far in life. Because everything they do, they want to do by their own effort. Everything they want to do by their own struggle. But you know that one day of favor and grace is more than a thousand years of labor. 
grace, when God releases grace into a man's life, I tell you, nothing can stop that man. When God decides to help a man, he sends him grace. Grace is that divine ability that is released to a man that makes a man do and become and achieve what he wouldn't have been able to achieve or do or become by himself. Grace, it was make you do beyond human calculation. You check your potential. You check your resources. You check where you are coming from. You know that no way. No way. Grace makes you achieve what you couldn't have achieved by yourself. Grace is that divine currency that God releases for a man to spend in his life for the man to become all that the man was born to be. When grace locates you, you astound your colleagues. You surprise your neighbors. You surprise people who were looking at you thinking that you will become nothing. Then they are watching. All they can say is that this is grace. Not by my calculation. Not by my effort. Not by my power. It's the grace of God. Grace is that thing that is ever and will forever be better than gold. Honestly, instead of you to give me gold, Father, give me grace. When God gives me grace, all the gold I need will locate me. All the gold I need will locate me. That is why I don't understand people who, they are searching for gold. They can't come for Bible study. They are looking for gold. What you need is grace. Sometimes why you don't even come for Bible study, you sit in that store. Tea, you go close, nobody branch. You lock your store, you go home. What you are looking for is grace. What you are looking for is grace. I want you to turn your Bibles to Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4. Hallelujah. Mm. Anybody needing grace in this place this morning? Grace is coming afresh to your life in the name of Jesus. If you get to Zechariah, go to chapter 4 very quickly. Look at verse 6. Verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Who is he speaking to? Zerubbabel. Please, who is he speaking to? Who is he speaking to? Zerubbabel. Saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone with shoutings, grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. This was Zerubbabel. A nobody. Nobody knew Zerubbabel. And the word of God came to him. Says, Zerubbabel, listen. Your life is not by might. It's not by power, it's by my spirit. So I found out that for the issue of grace, it doesn't matter where you are coming from. It doesn't matter the background you are coming from. It doesn't matter as if this one will not become anything. That's not the issue. It says, Zerubbabel, listen, this is your life and the fulfillment of God's assignment for your life is not by might, it's not by power. And I love the next verse. That is verse 7. Verse 7. Give me verse 7. Who art thou, O great mountain? So I found out that when grace comes to a man's life, no mountain can stand in a man's way. Are you listening to God this morning? When grace comes, no mountain, no mountain can resist the man. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever stop what God plan to do with the man when some people say hey i would have become something but somebody stopped me you didn't get grace when grace comes you are unstoppable grace makes a man unstoppable men make a knife forces of darkness make a knife but you become unstoppable by the grace of god he says Zerubbabel, listen your hands have laid the foundation your hands will finish it he began to talk later on about do not despise the days of little things. 
May I tell you, today, things may be small around where you are. But you know what the word of God is saying to you today? Though your beginning may be small, your later end shall greatly increase. And it's all going to be by the grace of God. Many times, instead of people to look for grace, they are looking for connection. Many times, instead of people to look for grace, they are looking for who can we call to help us. What you need is grace. Do you know when grace locates you, help us will come to your aid. It's grace that makes a man help another man. It's grace. When a man locates grace, God commands people to help him. But when you are pursuing people to help you, now they will not be picking your calls again. Say, Nala Abek, drop the phone there. Drop the phone there. Drop the phone there. Later, later, they will send you tell, sorry I missed your call. Somebody say grace. Come on, shout it like you mean it. Say grace. You know, I used to think that when God has a great plan for a man's life, it will just happen automatically. That's what I used to think. Please listen, it's not like that. The plan of God for any man's life never happens automatically. God may have brought big, big prophecies. Great prophecies. He may have even told you in your spirit, this is what you will become. Do you know if you are serious and you want to actually achieve what God is showing you, you must go and ask for grace. Even Jesus had to ask for grace. You must go and ask for grace. Let me show you something. Go to Second Chronicles. Sorry, First Chronicles chapter 4. First Chronicles chapter 4. Are you in the church this morning? Yeah. So, First Chronicles chapter 4 is a story you all know. Because many preachers have preached for it. But I want to show you something about Jabez. You remember Jabez? Look at verse 9. First Chronicles 4 verse 9. Please open in your Bibles. First Chronicles 4 verse 9. And Jabez. Everybody say Jabez. Who was Jabez? Even look at the name. So it looks Jabez. The name doesn't even look to stop. Jabez. There are nice names you read in the Bible. Jabez. This Bible says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. Verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thy hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from evil that it might not grieve me and everybody read the balance Jabez looked at his life uh -uh. is this where my life will end this one struggling with small small things around here is this how my life will be now Jabez had a choice Jabez would have started complaining. Go to this person and complain. I don't know what's happening. No? Eh? See this here is even finishing again. Go to this person and complain. How many of you know that if that's the direction Jabez took, we would never have heard about him. See, I don't care where your life is at right now. Jabez was at the very lowest point in his life. But instead of complaining, the Bible says, Jabez turned to the God of heaven and he was pleading for grace. That prayer there was a beg for grace. God, please release grace into my life. Please release grace. Release grace. Release your divine ability. God, do something for my life. And the Bible says, and God granted his request. You know one of the things I love about God? There is no man who will ever cry to God for grace that God will deny. I'm here to see it. I'm yet to see that one who went to God and was pleading for grace and God didn't help him. Somebody say grace. May I announce to you, when God wants to help a man, he gives him grace. When God wants to assist a man, when Jabez cried, what the man was begging for was grace. Grace. When God told me in 1988, he had called me to the ministry. All I have been praying for for years was grace. God, grace. Grace is what will make you outstanding in life. 
Grace is what will make you stand out in life. It's the grace of God. Many times you hear some people say, I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made man. They are talking trash. Only God can make you become anything in life. One of the things you find about grace is that grace is not arbitrary. And that's where many people miss it. Like during the worship this morning, after the worship I told you something. Grace is not arbitrary. That's why some people, they stay in a church for a while. They say, I bet God not they work for this church. They go find another church. They expect that the message that will come will just work automatically. Choir was singing such a powerful song. Look at the way you just look. I was so blessed. I was telling them as we were coming back from Eket. Do you know that this Eket I went, honestly speaking, I've been in many places to preach. I was the one preaching. But it was as if I went for a personal retreat. What God did in my life. Grace is not arbitrary. Why are you singing? You engage the grace of God in that song. You don't sit down and wait for them to finish. Because your heart is crying for something. Maybe some of you, you are just comfortable where you are. If you are like me, and you still need to push further in your life, you, don't, you cannot afford to cross your leg. Maybe you look at your neighbor, who is just uh, thanking God like this, and you say, okay, maybe this is how to do it. You don't know, maybe the person is satisfied. Where they are. But if you are hungry for more, you can't afford to be stylish about this thing. Grace is not arbitrary. And grace is particular. Write it down. Grace is particular. Grace is particular. As we are here this morning, there's grace. The Bible says Jesus was preaching in a particular place. And the power of God was present to heal them. Jesus was there. The power of God was present to heal them. Do you know none of them were healed? It was Jesus, though, not me. The power of God was present to heal them. None was healed. All of a sudden, Jesus noticed that the roof was shifting. And then, four crazy men brought their friends who was paralyzed. Five of them had faith. Because even the sick man, you know, if he didn't believe in the grace of God, he said, This one are there, so make a call fall again. Just leave me where are they? Make a no say where are they now are they. You see, that's why some people's life will not move forward. Just leave me where are they? The one are there, so eh? Make a job there where are they? May you not there where you day. The Bible says they dropped this man right in the midst of the crowd in front of Jesus. And Jesus just said, you pick up your mat. Go home. Carry your bed and go home. In their presence, the man carried his bed. Somebody say grace. The grace had been there. There were sick people who came in there. They went home the same. But somebody was reaching out to the grace. You know the Bible says that Anyone that is born of the Spirit is like the wind. Moving, 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 moving. You know wind has no direction. You just be moving. But there was a wind that came in Acts chapter 2. It was the wind of grace. There were many houses in Jerusalem. But that wind had a location it was looking for. The wind was not arbitrary that day. It went to that upper room. Where people had been reaching out for grace and fell on them. May I announce to you, 2019 is around the corner. Why is God talking to us like this? There is grace for 2019. There is grace for 2019. And listen to me, the people who will maximize that grace are the people that are already positioning themselves to collect the grace. The wind located a particular house because grace is particular. Let me prove it again from the word of God. Go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Look at verse 1. I need to go fast now. The Lord will help us. Amen. Are you still here? I said amen. amen. Apostle Paul was writing to Timothy. And he said... Thou, therefore, please, what's the nowadays word for thou? You, 
particular. You, you. You see, when I'm reading the word of God, one of the things that quickly leaps out to me is that God is particular. So the, the grace of God was just moving in the church today, just moving. Everybody just collected grace. It's not like that. Too. Grace is particular. Grace only encounters those who are reaching out for grace. Because grace eh, is divine resources and God never wastes his resources. I was telling them on Uyo, uh, sorry, Eket. Sometimes when I travel and I buy some clothes for myself, by the time I get back home and I'm trying them, either they are too tight somewhere and I can't use them. Expensive clothes. Do you know, I sit down and I'm calculating who I can give this dress to. I can't give it to anybody. I don't want somebody, I will give you a dress of 150 pounds and it's going to treat it like a rag. If a human being can be particular about something as useless as a dress, how much more the grace of God. If you read the Bible, there are some people who waste grace. And God is not a waste of resources. So grace is particular. He said, you therefore my son, my son particularly, I don't know if you are here this morning and you understand that there is a journey ahead of you. You understand that there is something huge ahead of you. There's something beyond where you have reached ahead of you. And you cannot enter into that thing without grace. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He didn't say be strong in yourself. So many people are trying. Effort. Mm, mm, mm. Grace is better than labor. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In other words, you know, grace comes in installments. I hope you know that. When you get born again, God releases grace. All of us, we had the same measure of grace when we got born again. Everybody. At the born again experience... At the new birth experience, the same level of grace God releases to everybody. But do you know the difference between one person and the other? Is how God is able to see your hunger for more grace. The Bible says he giveth more grace. He giveth more grace. He giveth more grace. Many years ago, I prayed a prayer and I'm still, I will never, even in this Uyo, I was crying, I was still begging God. That's why I told you that it was more like a retreat. Than a preaching something. Hey! I say, God, I know that I cannot become anything without your grace. I know I cannot fulfill your purpose on my life without your grace. Father, you know, grace and mercy are twins. I say, God, can you admit me into the permanent ICU of your mercy? You know, ICU, intensive care units. Admit me permanently into the ICU of your grace. I need your grace every hour. That songwriter looked at himself. He said, I need you. I need you every hour. But me, oh, I say, oh, you are looking for hour. I need you every second. Amen. Grace is particular. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The whole of this December, all the Tuesdays in December, we are teaching on grace. I want to beg you to come. If you are serious about 2019, I want to beg you to come. Because the people that are going to soar high, the people that are going to maximize 2019, they are people who have learned how to receive more grace for their lives. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Ah, I don't know. I thought once I just come to Morningstar, my life will just be like this. My life will be like this. Let me tell you, you engage grace. So, You engage grace. Can be in the same place. Look at Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, the Bible says many people were also being baptized. Not everybody received grace that day. Some people just got wet and went away. Happy that they, they went to John's baptism. But the Bible says when Jesus was being baptized, he knew, if I don't collect grace here, what I, why did I come to this earth? 
The Bible says as they were as John was baptizing, he was praying. He was pray- what do you think he was praying for? What do you think Jesus was? Let me show you something about Jesus. Go to Hebrews chapter 2. Go to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews 2, look at verse 9. This was our own master, Jesus Christ. Verse 9, Hebrews 2. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. So, for Jesus to fulfill his ministry, for Jesus to taste death for every man, how did he do it? Oh, are you in church or you are in the mortuary? Please, how did he do it? By the grace of God. It was by the grace of God. You don't understand that it takes grace for you to be the, the people you created. Come and slap you. Tie your eye. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Shall you say you are a prophet? Prophesy now, prophesy. It took grace for Jesus to keep quiet. Grace. When when Peter just smart, 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 your carry knife, why? Cut somebody's ear. You don't know it took grace for Jesus to bend down, pick that ear, and say, Sorry, eh, Marcos, don't mind this boy, he doesn't understand. Eh, Bele? And heal the ear back. It took grace. So when he was being baptized, just at the beginning of his ministry, he knew. I cannot do this thing without grace. He was begging and praying. And all of a sudden, that dove descended from heaven. The Bible says the heavens were opened unto him. When you go back, please read that scripture very carefully. Many people were being baptized that day. But the Bible says when the heavens opened, the heavens were opened unto him. That means we can all be here. And the heavens will be opened to some people. And the heavens will not be opened to some people. Open heavens is not like, oh, the whole heavens is open for everybody. No. How do I get my heavens to open? Grace. Grace. Somebody say grace. Oh, come on. Shake your neighbor. Say, we are talking about grace. Look at Paul. I'll just mention about four men and then we'll pray together. And when we get to the place of prayer, I want you to know what to pray for. This morning, I don't want you to pray for many things. Only one prayer point is permitted today. What's the prayer point? Grace. More grace, Lord. More grace. First Corinthians chapter 15. Let's look at Paul. Let's look at Paul. First Corinthians chapter 15. Look at verse 10. First Corinthians 15 verse 10. It says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Please. How did Paul become what he was? Was by the grace. So, anything you see about Paul, anything you see about Paul, it was not Paul, it was the grace of God. Anything you see Paul accomplish, it was not Paul, it was the grace of God. I wish the students here will understand the grace of God. That when the grace of God comes upon your life as a student, you enter class and people are struggling. Eh? This calculus. And the thing is just entering. I was say, ah, you understand that mindset? Just as clear as a bell. I understand him clearly. It's the grace of God. Amen. I remember one time I was in an exam. It was a, a statistics exam. Undergraduate. As I was writing, as I got in that hall, I look at the question paper, my God. The thing eh? not let bite. Have you been in an exam when the exam not let you bite? You look this, I know where to bite. I say, my God. What do I do now? What do I do now? One voice, just say, ah, just uh, go and submit the paper and go and read for tomorrow. Today is already finished. All of a sudden, the Spirit of God ministered to me. Why don't you pray? I put down my head on, on the table and I started praying. I had prepared for this exam. But the angle of these questions, I couldn't understand. I started praying. I said, oh God, oh God, please help me. As I finished that prayer, it was like magic. All of a sudden, because it was this uh, statistics, but there were some word problems. All those uh, word problems. So he said, try with the word problem. So I started reading and it was something I could now understand what to do. I started, started, started. I finished the word problems. He said, okay, go and try the other side. I went to the recalculations. I looked at them. I was, do you know that that course I made an A? Somebody said grace. Yeah. When we talk about the grace of God, please listen. We are not talking about just how to serve God. Grace must cover every area of your life. 
Your marriage must come under the grace of God. Stop all your struggling. Bring your marriage under grace. Your children, bring them under the grace of God. Amen. I said amen. amen. When we were having children, as conception happened, we started praying for grace for them. Right from the womb. Right from the womb. When grace came on Abraham, everywhere Isaac went, he said, the God of my father Abraham. And one of the critical issues is that you must learn to receive this grace when you are still young. It's not that you will not build house. Eh? But what is the joy of building a house at 70 years? That time he said, Just make one small mat for me downstairs. Hi. Karibo Shander Sandaya. Yeah. May the Lord satisfy you with his mercy early. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul said, by the grace of God, I am. You know people that receive grace, they don't know how to boast. <laughs> because when they look at themselves, who know maybe? Who am I to talk? When you see a man that is doing like, he doesn't, he doesn't understand grace. You look at yourself. I am here today because God helped me. I'm alive today only because of His grace. He kept me. God kept me. He kept me. So I wouldn't let go. The grace of God. The grace of God. Paul said, it's by the grace of God that I am who I am. So all the things that Paul did for the kingdom of God, he knew it was grace. Look at Noah. Go to Genesis chapter 6. I don't have time. Maybe during the uh, Tuesdays when we are doing thorough teaching, we can now look at them particularly. Let's just mention them and walk away this morning. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you for grace, Lord. Jesus, Genesis 6 verse 5. And God saw the wickedness of man that was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And he repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made them. Everybody read verse 8 together. I want to read. You see, eh? Even with all the evil going around, even all the nonsense that was going on in the days of Noah, God located a man. The Bible says Noah found grace. Do you know when grace comes to your life, not only you is covered by the grace, your children are covered. By that grace. When the whole earth was destroyed, Noah was saved. His children were saved. His wife was saved. Grace. Noah found grace in the eyes of God. So when God, you know, I, I, love, I love seeing the rainbow. There was a rainbow that came out some two, three weeks ago. I've never seen such a rainbow since I was born. I don't know if any of you saw that rainbow. Ha! If you saw that rainbow, big and bright as if it was touching the ground, I have never seen such a rainbow. Anytime I see the rainbow, I thank God, but I also thank Noah. You know why I thank Noah? It was because of Noah. Who found grace in the eyes of God. That God said, never again will I destroy this earth with a flood. As long as this earth remains. Sea time and harvest. Cold and heat. Summer and winter. Day and night shall never cease. Why? Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Do you know that there is a way you will find grace. That... 
Not only you and your family, not only your generation, even generations to come will still be tapping into that grace. Grace that is only for you to eat is not enough grace. You know, Pastor Mana was telling us, when you say you are blessed, it's just for yourself. You are not yet blessed. So I will bless you, I will make you a blessing. Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Let's leave with Noah. Let's look at David. You remember David? Do you remember David? If you remember, say yes. You are young people here, behave like young people. Don't just form. Amen. David was born, last born. Even when prophets came, by the word of the Lord to anoint a king, did they call David? They said, I bet that's small, smally. He's in the bush. He's taking care of the sheep. In his own constituency, they already zoned him out. He was not even up for to contest the election. Are you following what I'm saying? She don't understand grace. They zoned him out. This one is not supposed to become anything. But when the prophet check, 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 nobody. He said, excuse me, sir, you not get another pick. He said, oh, there's one. He's in the bush. He said, we are not sitting down until that one comes. Somebody say grace. Yeah. When the Bible was recording the story of David, he said, I found him in a howling desert. I brought him to be shepherd over my people Israel. Later when you get home, you read Isaiah 55. But we're going to read just a part of it today. Go to Isaiah 55. Let's read only one verse. Let me show you what David found that made him to become who he was. Isaiah 55. Look at verse 3. Isaiah 55 verse 3. So when you get home, read from verse 1. Okay? He said, incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. So when David was found by God, what made David to become who he was? Sure mercy. Mercy that never changes. And you know what God spoke to me some days ago, and, and I shared with, with you, those of you who were in service. Go to Isaiah 54. Go to Isaiah 54. Let me show you what God showed me. The sure mercies of David. Look at Isaiah 54 verse 10. And it's the word of God for you this morning. Amen. He said, For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from you. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Say the Lord that has mercy on you. I thought somebody would shout a good amen. amen. So, what brought David where he was, was the mercy of God. Ah. Some years ago, I was crying. I was praying. Look upon me, O God. Be merciful unto me. As thou used to do. Unto those who fear your name. Look upon me, O God. Let me tell you something. You don't just sit down. And say, the day God like, he go show me mercy. The day God like, he go show me grace. It's not like that, oh. Please, it is not like that. If not, eh. Next year. You will leave this church and say, I thought there is grace in this church. Me and go look for another church. You will stay there two years. You will carry your bag again. I, because you will keep thinking that the grace and mercy of God is something that we just call, receive! Receive! Yes, there is a place for that. But there is also a place for you taking it and reaching out. My life will not be like this. God, how long? God, how long? This poverty must end. When I see some of you, you are just so, so, so relaxed. And you are saying, maybe one day, one day, God will just show pity. No. When you look at Hebrews 4, 16, he said, let us come boldly onto the throne of grace so that we can obtain mercy. Mercy is obtained by those that are begging for mercy. I know some churches don't like to use the word mercy, uh, beg. That you know, God, Jesus has done it, you don't beg for it. Yeah? In a sense, it's true. But when you need something from somebody and it's only the person that can give you, is that not begging? I made up my mind a long time ago 
And that's the principle on which we are building this work. By the grace of God, we beg no man. I am a beggar as you see me here, but I know where to beg. I know where to beg. I'm telling you, I know where to beg. I know if I can beg God, he will persuade men. I know where to beg. I am a beggar. I, I am a big, I, I think I am one of the biggest beggars on earth. Crying and begging. Let's assume now you see two men as you are living. Two of them are beggars. And one of them, well, is not too well dressed, but he put hand for pocket. Uh, see, 